Okay, so I'm going to show an example of finding a derivative, a first derivative, um, using the definition of the derivative. Definition of a derivative. And um, your definition is f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches uh, 0, as h approaches 0 of f evaluated at x plus h minus f of x the function all over h. So let me use this um, definition for two examples. My first one will make it um, for this specific function f of x is we'll do 2x squared minus 3. So I'm just going to follow this formula. I'm going to start with this portion here, this f of x plus h. I'm going to do that on the side here. And if you remember your function notation, that just says that you're taking x plus h and plugging it in for x. So you have two times, and in place of x, x plus h squared minus 3. Okay, again, this is only this portion of the definition. So I'm going to find this part and then I'm going to plug it into the whole thing. So x plus h squared is what my um, operation would be first. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3. Then you distribute the 2. 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3. This is my function f of x plus h. That's this portion, this is this portion of the formula. So I only found one part. Now I'm going to find f prime of x and again it is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which we just determined was this for this function, 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3, right? This is this portion. Then this says minus f of x. Well, where's f of x? f of x is this. So now I'm going to plug that part into my formula minus f of x, which is just 2x squared minus 3, all over h, okay? And I'm running into this a little bit. This is separate, okay? I did that first. Okay, so again, f of x plus h, you're plugging x plus h into your function for x, then you're subtracting the original function, dividing by h. Last but not least is to take the limit. Okay, so be careful because, all right, so I'm not taking the limit yet. That's the last thing I do, so I'm just going to copy that down. Be careful here because this minus is going to distribute, so both the signs are going to change here. So this first expression is going to stay the same, 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3, then minus 2x squared, and then plus 3 when I distribute that negative into the second portion of the numerator. You know that you're doing the derivative correctly if, so let me copy this down again. In the numerator here, all the terms that don't have an h in them are going to cancel. In the numerator here, all the terms that do not have h are going to cancel. So you should only be left with terms that have h in them on the top. Because at the end of the day, before you take this limit, I'm not taking it yet, before you take this limit, you want this h to cancel. So technically what's happening here is in the numerator, being that every term has an h in it, I could technically factor out an h. Right? If I were to distribute this h, it's the same thing that I had here, 4xh plus 2h. So I took the h out because now... I show that it will cancel, and I'm left with 4x plus 2h after I simplify. Now, 
again, like I said, the last thing that I do when I find a first derivative is find the limit. And now I could finally do that because everything is simplified here. I have to do all this algebra inside here first before I take the limit. And now that the limit as h approaches 0, because it's h that's approaching 0, I'm going to replace h with 0. And when I do that, I get 4x plus 2 times 0, or 4x. Here is my first derivative. The first derivative f prime of x using the definition of the derivative is equal to 4x. And you know, after you guys learn the definition of a derivative, you'll get more simple, uh, more you'll learn rules to basically simplify um, the derivative. It'll become easier. So let me just do one with a fraction. And again, I want the first derivative. And again, let me write the um, definition again. The limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm going to go straight into, I'm going to copy this down, f of x plus h, right? So I'm replacing x with x plus h in my original function. 2 over x plus h minus f of x, which is 2 over x all over h, here is my setup. So once again, this part, 2 over x plus h, is f of x plus h, and 2 over x is this part, f of x, right? Okay. Um, so let's simplify now. Let me get rid of all that. Okay, so here's the part that might be, you know, maybe crappy. You have a complex fraction here. You have fractions within fractions. So we need to simplify this. So this numerator, I want to bring together as, a, oops, this numerator I want to bring together as a single fraction. So what I need is a common denominator. So this fraction here, so the common denominator between just the numerator, between these two fractions on top, is just an x plus h and an x. So this guy is going to need to be multiplied by x on the top and on the bottom. And then this guy needs to be multiplied by an x plus h on the top and on the bottom so that I create a common denominator. Now I'm going to show all my work for this so you see where it goes. Um, so here, equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x over, you can keep this factored, x times x plus h minus 2x plus 2h over x times x plus h all over h, right? So all I did here was distribute the 2x, 2x, 2h. This negative will distribute after. Now I will bring the numerator into a single fraction. So I have 2x minus 2x minus 2h. 2x minus 2x minus 2h all over your common denominator x times x plus h all over h. And the limit is the last thing that I do. So I'm still copying that down because I have not taken the limit yet. Again, notice that this numerator, everything that does not have an h in it cancels. Negative 2h over x times x plus h divided by h over 1. So what did I do? I have a fraction, which simplified into this. This is a division bar divided by h over 1. And the reason that I wrote it this way is because when you're dividing fractions, and now you can see it as division of fractions, a complex fraction is just division of fractions. You keep the first fraction the same, and you flip the second fraction, and then change to multiplication. And you'll see that again, right, the h 
cancels out, which is what you want. That's how you know you're doing it correctly again. The H is going to cancel out. So now I have F prime of X equals the limit as H approaches 0 of. What's left on top? Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 over what's left on the bottom, just X times X plus H. And again, I'm doing the first derivative using the definition of the derivative the, with the limit. Now, I'm not done yet. The last thing that I do, once I simplify everything inside these brackets, is to take the 0 and plug it in for H, because H is approaching 0. Once I actually do that, now I do not have to write that limit as H, as H approaches 0. I'm actually taking the limit, so now it goes away finally. And this simplifies into negative 2 over x squared, which is my first derivative f prime of x.